And here is the Writer's Almanac for Tuesday. It's the 26th of April, 2022. It was on this day, 1922, E.B. White was on a car trip out to Seattle, wrote to his mother from Columbus, Ohio, saying, Spring has arrived in Ohio. This is a flat state where red pigs graze in bright green fields and where farms are neat and prosperous. Sheep come drifting up long green lawns where poplars throw interminable shadows, come drifting up and stand like statues beneath white plum blossoms. Lilacs are in full bloom and the lavender ironwood blossoms are coloring all the roads. It was on this day in 1934, Scott Fitzgerald wrote a letter to his wife, Zelda, who was in an institution for schizophrenia. He wrote to her, the chances that the spring that's for everyone, like in the popular songs, may belong to us too. The good things and the first years together and the good months that we had two years ago in Montgomery will stay with me forever. And you should feel like I do, that they can be renewed, if not in a new spring, then in a new summer. I love you, my darling, my darling. It's the birthday of the novelist Bernard Malamud, born in Brooklyn, 1914. His parents, Jewish immigrants from Russia, they had a little tiny grocery store. Bernard fell in love with movies when he was a kid, and he loved to retell the stories of the movies to his classmates. Graduated from college in the middle of the Depression, struggling just to earn enough money to eat and pay the rent. Got a job as a clerk in the U.S. Census Bureau, checking drainage ditch statistics. But as soon as he was done with his work each day, he would sit at his desk and write short stories. He applied for a job out in Oregon teaching freshman composition at Oregon State College. And it was there, thousands of miles away from Brooklyn, that he started to write stories about people from his old neighborhood, which came out in his first book, The Magic Barrel, 1958. It's the birthday of Audubon, John James Audubon, born Haiti, 1785, to a French naval officer and plantation owner and a Creole chambermaid. He grew up in France. From his early childhood, he loved birds, headed to America when he was 18 to escape the Napoleonic Wars. He was fascinated by all the new American birds he saw, began to study them. He banded birds to study their migration. He fell in love with a woman named Lucy Bakewell. He married her, opened a general store in Kentucky on the Ohio River. He wasn't good at business, so he was thrown into prison for debt, and that was when he set out on a quest to catalog and draw every bird in North America. Traveled from New Orleans to the Everglades, from Niagara Falls, the Great Lakes, to Newfoundland, down the Mississippi, all the way to Texas, and published his masterpiece, Birds of America, with 435 life-sized, hand-colored pictures. Here's a poem for today from the 17th century, John Wilmot, Earl of Rochester, a poem entitled Love and Life. All my past life is mine no more. The flying hours are gone like transitory dreams given o'er, whose images are kept in store by memory alone. Whatever is to come is not. How can it then be mine, the present moments, all my lot? And that, as fast as it is got, Phyllis, is wholly thine. Then talk not of inconstancy, false hearts, and broken vows. If I, by miracle, can be this live-long minute true to thee, Tis all that heaven allows. Love and Life from John Wilmot, Earl of Rochester. That's the Writer's Almanac for Tuesday, April the 26th. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.